Joseph's ability to interpret Pharaoh's dream took him from prison to the second highest position in the kingdom. Just knowing what a dream meant. That was the marketplace. It took him to the marketplace because he set up an agricultural system that when the other countries were going through famine, they all had to come to him and he could supply the food. All of that was in a dream. Why don't you tap somebody and say, there's some answers in your dreams. Solutions in your dream. Ideas in your dreams. God is helping you to organize your life while you're dreaming. Last one before it's your turn. I had an interview at St. Andrew Bay for retarded citizen. That's what they called it then. It's not politically correct now to say retarded citizens. But at that time, they, in, they called me in for an interview. And when I went in for, well, that morning, I woke up getting dressed for the interview. And while I was getting dressed, I saw a vision. In the mirror, I'm combing my hair, and I see a question written out. And I said the same thing, hmm. So I kept doing my hair and praying and saying, God, what is that question? Then I saw another question. I went to get a piece of paper and wrote this question down, wrote this qu another one. I saw three questions. Each time I would stop and write it down. And I was praying, what is this question? Then just through wisdom or knowledge, because there's nothing in the natural would make me ask why these questions or what's the answer, this thought came to mind, ask, What's the answer to these questions? I said, what's the answer to these questions, Lord? And the answers appear. I wrote out the answers. Before time for my interview, I arrived early, sat in the parking lot, parking lot, studied the questions, studied the answers. Truth. I went in for the interview, and I didn't know that I would be interviewing in front of three people. I thought it would just be one person. It was three ladies, and when I came in, they said, have a seat. I took a seat. It was a chair right in front of them, and the three were sitting across like, behind a table like this. And they said, we just have a few questions for you. They asked the first question. I smiled because I knew we got them, God. <laughs> I answered the question. I watched them look at each other stunned. I mean, and they changed beet red like you, Billy. They changed colors. They just like... They looked at each other, leaned over and whispered and said, okay, well, we just have one other question. They asked that question, I answered it. They looked at each other again and started whispering and they said, well, we just have one other. I started to say, I thought you said you just had one question. <laughs> After the third question, the director said to me, how do you know the answers to those questions? And I felt divinely inspired. I never talked about Jesus on an interview. Never, but I knew this was the Lord's dealing, and I felt inspired to say, I had this vision, and I saw these questions. And we sat there, and for three hours, I told them about the vision, how I saw the question, how I heard the answer, and we literally sat there three hours, them listening to me. Telling them, by the time I finished, I said, do I have the job? They said, oh, you had the job when you answered the first question. The director went further to say, I have never hired anybody black. She said, I have a grant through United Cerebral Palsy and you have to hire, hire so many minorities. I had never hired anybody color. And she was in such shock, she walked from behind the table and she said, you know what? I don't, can't even figure out how you people do your hair. How, do, how are you able to do this? And she caught herself, it's the truth. She caught herself and said, and I've just never hired anybody black. She said it twice. She was shocked. But God knows how to kill racism. God is reigniting your dreams 
and giving you the tools to aid you in prospering because of your dreams. Dr. Roger has completed the God of My Dreams workbook and textbook. You can order today. For your donation of any amount, you will receive today's message on CD. For your donation of $50 or more, you will receive a God of My Dream textbook and workbook. For your donation of $75 or more, you will receive the God of My Dreams textbook and workbook, along with the God of My Dreams pocket journal and a God of My Dreams mug. To place your order, contact VY Rosier Ministries staff at 850-769-5442 or email us your request at vyrosierministries at gmail.com. You may also place your order securely on PayPal. Thank you for supporting Let the Prophet Speak and helping us reach the nations. Did you have a dream? I'm not trying to make anybody Martin Luther King. But believe it or not, that speech based on he literally had a dream. He went to the mountaintop. He looked over. He saw his death. He literally dreamed his death. Abraham Lincoln dreamed his death. It was just the way he dreamed it. I don't remember all of it, but I was explaining to my sister that um, last night I dreamed I was fighting myself. I can't oh, wow. remember the entire dream, but the whole thing I remember is that I was fighting myself. And I said, Do you well, know why you can't remember the entire dream? Because it wasn't important. Okay. It's a, have you ever had a salad and there was a, you wonder why they put this little garnishes on there? You really don't want to eat it. It's mm -hmm. just meant to decorate the plate and make it look really good. But the salad was the main part. Mm -hmm. The main part was you fighting yourself. Mm -hmm. So the rest was unimportant. That's why it left you, but it stood out with you fighting yourself. So it has to do with inward warfare. Mm -hmm. It has to do with what you're doing against yourself. It's almost like a person putting a knife to their own throat. Mm -hmm. I felt there's been a lot of battles within you. On one side of you, uh, what's it, Paul that says, when I would do, to do right, evil is present with me. Mm -hmm. So there's a war that goes on in my members. There's a fight that's going on in you. I feel the face of you looking at you face to face and the spiritual you trying to dominate and fight the uh, carnal part of you or to fight the natural part of you. The man, men are three part. Spirit, turn your face that, that way. Soul, right behind him so you can't see him. You're just short enough so they can't see you. Yes, and turn and face so that your face is toward his back. If you'll turn around and put your face toward his back. Yeah. Okay. So this is our spirit. This is our soul. And this is our body. Spirit, soul, body. Our spirit is always supposed to be the biggest. It's always supposed to take the lead. Our spirit is always supposed to be able to subdue our emotions, our soul, the, the suke, the mind-willing emotions. Our spirit, pneuma, our spirit should always tower over, overpower, and lead our body. So that our flesh always has to submit and come in perfect alignment. So when there's a war or a conflict, Turn around if this way. And our soul is here. You're this person. So you're constantly fighting the spirit. And the spirit is constantly fighting the flesh. Now don't hit Pastor Claudia. I know you want to. <laughs> <laughs> and it's perfect with Marissa in the middle. Because our emotions are always pulled in between the two. They're always pulled in between the spirit man and the natural man emotionally it feels good to eat a gallon of ice cream and it actually works on the pleasure center of the brain so if you like ice cream or whatever your favorite dessert is the pleasure center of that brain so it's a good substitution if your spirit feel for crack for cocaine instead your crack is spaghetti your crack is cheesecake your crack is Key lime pie. <laughs> You're cracked. They're, rather than become a sex addict, 
You just make love to the food. You notice some people, they're eating and mmm. <laughs> you notice their head moving. You hear the mmm, those sighs. You have to look and say, <laughs> Because it works on the same part of the brain. Your pleasure center. What we want to do is pray for you that the warfare cease. That the conflict cease. Can I pray for you? That the conflict That the dream is designed to tell you something. To stop fighting you. God's trying to get you to quit fighting you. And you've been in the fight for a long time. And it's not the first time you've had that dream. Maybe the first time you remember, but it's not the first time you had it. Because he was speaking to you to say... The only person that can harm you, Bob Jones said to me, my last mentoring experience in Athens, he said, "Hun, the only person can hinder you is you. The only person can stop you is you. If you do it, you can't blame anybody else. You did it because you wanted to. Yeah, you're a born leader. And if you don't want to do it, they're not going to talk you into doing it. God, we thank you for your hand over her life. And we thank you for this dream. And this dream indicated how you wanted her to fall in perfect alignment. That the warfare, the conflict within herself will end. The warring that's been going on on her inner man will end. And she'll no longer war against herself. But she'll submit to the will of God. And her spirit will be spirit led, led by the Holy Spirit. Her spirit being led by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, making her perfect to be in sync. Spirit, soul, and body, causing them to fall in perfect alignment so that there will not be an inner war. But I thank you that she'll win the victory over the war that has gone on in her flesh, and she will excel spiritually in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Does that make sense to you? Yes, ma'am. It does. It's exactly what I told her before you. Um, before I told you the dream, I told her I think that's what it was, but I wasn't sure. So, oh, good job. Thank Look at your neighbor and tell them God's trying to tell you something. He was telling you last night. He was telling you the night before. He was talking to you in your dreams. If you keep a journal, quite often I find that when people are pursuing um, individuals, give me a word, give me a word, that they've been having a word for weeks, for months. They've just been ignoring the one that is the word made flesh. Our intercessors sitting on the right hand of the Father, they've been ignoring the spirit of prophecy who showed up every night. Helping them to deal with what they need to deal with. Yes. Um, I've had a dream, it's probably been about maybe 15, 16 years ago. Um, wow, and you the, still remember it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's um, the pastor that I was under, or it's my pastor at the time, um, the dream is uh, there was a major stage and um, I think I was on this major stage and then all of a sudden I was walking down the hall with T.D. Jakes and my pastor at the time hmm. and they said to me that it's time for your generation to take um, a stand and it's going to start with you and you guys and I don't know who those guys were and then so he told, so he turned, T. Jakes turned to my pastor and said, isn't that right, Pastor Bishop Henderson? Mm -hmm. And he, re he reluctantly said yes, but he said yes. And that's all I remember. Okay. And have you had that dream? You just had that dream 16 years ago? And you, I'm sorry? It's been kind of coming back and forth to me. Okay. I, you had it 16 years ago. What made you think about it today? When you asked about dreams and what they mean. Have you had other dreams since then? Um, I've had lots of dreams. I'm a creative person, so I have dreams uh -huh. a lot. So, The reason I'm asking that is, why did that dream take the forefront today? It's a rhetorical question. <laughs> it took the forefront because that was what God wanted to deal with and address in your life. Out of all of those dreams, he was talking to you about your ascension. He was talking to you about going to a different level. Uh, I want to say ironically, but a better spiritual word is prophetically. When you started talking, I went into a trance. 
And when I went into a trance, I was standing in the first Pisca experience that I attended. And he had mics, Bishop Jakes had mics lined up on both sides. And there was a gentleman that got up to walk toward the mic. And that's where my trance started at. I was sitting and looked over and saw the guy get up and walk toward the mic. And he was walking toward the mic. He was talking to Bishop Jakes about his ascension. And I came back out of the trance when you started, when you mentioned Bishop Jakes name because what God has deposited down on the inside of you it's going to take two tight mentors to develop it and bring it out one Bishop Jakes represents your future your pastor represents where you are now what was said in the dream is speaking to where uh, it's a preview of things to come where God wants to take you so he woke that up or brought that back to your remembrance today to let you know that he no longer wants you to put that on the back burner or get busy with others and forget about this because it is the mandated, a mantle that's on your life. It's what God has uh, predestined for you to do and to be. And you keep trying to fit in a box when God has made you too diverse and too creative and you beat up on yourself trying to fit in and quite often that stifles your creativity so it's like going to the movies and they give you previews of things to come if you're like me i look at the previews and said oh i'm going to see that i decide what i'm going to see next now for those that are too saved to see a movie that's just on you okay but i, I it's a, he's giving you a preview of things to come so that you'll stay excited about it. You'll long for it. You'll look for it. You won't stop interceding and praying about it. You'll keep developing your talent. So when it's your moment, you will be ready. Okay, Pastor, she said, Pastor Deborah. And sir, are you aware of the calling of the Lord on your life? I see this mantle. It's like an anointing. It looks like a, a, a white cloud, as if I could equate it to something, just over your head. And I just kept feeling the Lord tugging me back to address the agony that comes with the calling. Because of the calling, you stay in turmoil and agony. And the enemy buffets those individuals more who have stronger anointings. Creative minds have more warfare. If you have not, I have a copy of um, Prophetic Insight for 2017. No warfare, no victory. This is the year of victory, but it's victory through warfare. And you've had so much warfare that some of the nuggets in there will help you. Uh, they will arm you and encourage you and strengthen you uh, from the questions you've asked. Like, why is this happening? Why is that happening? My God, what else is going to happen? The closer you are to birthing what God has impregnated within your spirit, the stronger the labor pains. You feel almost like I can't take anything else. And you've tried that line, I'll quit. And that didn't work. Uh, with the dream and interpretation, did that fit with your spirit? What did that do for you? And at any point, the Lord spoke to me to come back to you. Can you identify with any of that? Yes, ma'am. Um, when you said the dream, I knew that God, um, I just saw the pastor probably about several weeks ago. And so I was planning a ministry. So I know that God has a lot for me to do. It just was, there's some hesitation, things I'm just not hearing. I'm just really asking God for, but those, those were the words that you said that really helped uh, me to kind of move in that, in that direction. Okay. Yes, no. And what's your name? Craig Franklin. Okay. God is reigniting your dreams and giving you the tools to aid you in prospering because of your dreams. Dr. Roger has completed the God of My Dreams workbook and textbook. You can order today. For your donation of any amount, you will receive today's message on CD. For your donation of $50 or more, you will receive a God of My Dream textbook and workbook. For your donation of $75 or more, you will receive the God of My Dreams textbook and workbook, along with the God of My Dreams pocket journal and a God of My Dreams mug. To place your order, contact VY Rosier Ministries staff at 850-769-5442 or Email us your request at vyrosierministries at gmail.com. You may also place your order securely on PayPal. 
Thank you for supporting Let the Prophet Speak and helping us reach the nations. I have prayed about this dream on and off, but I had it last summer. Uh, September, either it was before the women conference or after, I can't remember the exact date. Mm -hmm. And I dreamt that I was on this huge ship. Mm -hmm. And on the ship, I was, I was sitting down, but I was tied to, felt like I was tied to a man. And I was facing in one direction and he was facing the other. And we were sort of like, Somebody tied us together, roped us together. And, uh, and then I, I woke up. I, I, you know, I had a question. I said, well, why was I on this ship and why I was tied to this person? Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't remember. I didn't see the, whether, you know, what color he was. or But it looked like he had on a plaid shirt. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's the reason why I said it was a man. Cause they had and this was a reoccurring dream? No, it's not a reoccurring dream. It's yeah. just that I just have questions, and I've been placing questions to the Lord about it. You know, while I was on this ship, and what? But the, how often you had the dream just once? Just one time. And you had it this year? No, I had it last year. Last year, okay. And you were asking the Lord, why was I on this ship, and why I was tied to this man, and we were roped and tied together on this huge ship? The mm -hmm. ship was just huge. I said, well, why God? Well. You know, it was just questions about it, and and I and I tried looking some things up, and I've been praying, and I said, I said, well, God, I guess you'll reveal it to me at the time that you want me to know what it meant. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that is a complex, symbolic dream. When you mentioned the three type dreams, simple, simple, symbolic, that is a complex, symbolic dream. I'm highlighting that because you can't interpret those on your own. You need someone that's gifted, that's skilled, a Joseph that's skilled in interpreting dreams. That dream is your life, and that man is Glenn Bostick. And you weren't ready to hear that on last year, though you were praying about it. It was massive. Your life was voluminous, the two of you together and you were bonded together, tied together, still are. And that sailing, if you imagine a ship, you're sailing through life, just enjoying life. The two of you are massive together. And that she, ship, the sea, the ocean, water represents out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water, the Holy Spirit when you're dealing with the water, and then you mass bodies of water, so it's a constant flow that the world was massive for you with the two of you and the travels that involved within that ship and cruising together. You cruised through life together. So your dream is telling you where you were and where you still are. And it's not a bad dream. You're still tied to this, no, this man. No other man would you allow yourself to be tied to like that. God is reigniting your dreams and giving you the tools to aid you in prospering of your dreams. Dr. Roger has completed the God of My Dreams workbook and textbook. You can order today. For your donation of any amount, you will receive today's message on CD. For your donation of $50 or more, you will receive a God of My Dream textbook and workbook. For your donation of $75 or more, you will receive the God of My Dreams textbook and workbook, along with the God of My Dreams pocket journal and a God of My Dreams mug. To place your order, contact B.Y. Rosier Ministries staff at 850-769-5442 or email us your request at vyrosierministries at gmail.com. You may also place your order securely on PayPal. Thank you for supporting Let the Prophet Speak and helping us reach the nations. Dream three nights ago, and it actually put fear in me. Um, I was actually pent down on the floor, and a person was on top of me, and they searched carefully for my heart and they pushed a knife in, but they actually didn't push it into my 
where my heart was, they actually pushed it in on the opposite side, and that's all I remember. You had a dream two nights ago? And the dream terrified you, why? Because that person was trying to kill me. And I know who the person was. Come here. We bind every attack of the enemy now in the name of Jesus. What was meant to kill you, it missed the heart. But the attack was real. But it missed the heart because they misjudged where the heart was. So where they thought it would be a more a fatal blow. Lord, we come against the attack. We come against the attack. We come against the spirit of violence. We come against the spirit of abuse. We come against every foul attack of the enemy. We come against the intent of the enemy. Lord, we thank you now for angelic Hosts, we thank you for warring angels. We thank you, God, that she's the territory that you marked that belonged to you. We thank you for your hand on her life. We thank you for your hand of protection that no weapon formed against her shall prosper and all those that rise up against her shall fall because that's your word. We bind the spirit of fear and we command her faith to rise up now in the name of Jesus because she is a dread warrior. She's not a victim. She's victorious. What the enemy meant for her hurt, you're already turning that thing around for her good. I thank you that you revealed it in order to heal it that there's nothing hidden that shall not be revealed that you revealed the impending threat and God I thank you because we can see it we can destroy it we can stop it at the root now God I thank you that every block that was set up every stumble everything that was set up to cause her to stumble and cause her harm turn it back on the head of those that prayed it wished it sent it let them eat the fruit of their own mouth that they might reap what they're plotting planning sowing in the name of Jesus your word has power I thank you that we speak life and we speak life more abundantly now God I thank you that your word is sure she shall not die but live to declare the goodness of God in the land of the living I thank you that we shall not fear because you've not given us a spirit of fear but a power love and sound mind now so what the enemy meant for her hurt I thank you that we get the glory you get the glory out of it we thank you for the victory in jesus name